Hello, today we're going to talk about the French elections of 2017, that's gonna be this Sunday. Of course, I'm an anti-globalist, so I'm gonna cheer for Mrs. Marine Le Pen, but I thought, let's talk about the centrist party's leader, the other candidate, Emmanuel Macron. Emmanuel Macron is far younger than most other leaders and is also called inexperienced, but if you look at the American elections, I thought most of those people should go and retire. I mean, Hillary Clinton, she was collapsing, falling apart, and then you had Donald Trump, who could be Santa Claus for all we know, but Emmanuel Macron, he's not as inexperienced, I think, as people would want to believe. He's quite successful, and that in itself should speak volumes, but he was a member of the Socialistic Party, and the current president, Francis Hollande, appointed him as the Minister of Economics, Industry and Digital. And this is quite an achievement, right? The president promoting you to these three things. But despite his success, in 2016, he decided to make his run for president as a socialistic liberal in the centrist party. As you can probably imagine, as a presidential candidate, he has made many statements, but one that is extra highlighted is that he's neither gonna unite the right or the left, but the French people as a whole. While this sounds very good on paper and all, I don't think he's gonna become the leader of the French people. Perhaps he will become elected, but I don't think he will become a president for the French people. He's part of the establishment, that's why. He's gonna bring power to the state. He's gonna bring power to the EU parliament. He was elected by Francis Hollande, the previous president, or well, the current. And he is gonna continue on with these bad traditions. They have already banned free speech, criticism of Islam, both France and Canada have this happened, as far as I know. And there have been huge dumps of immigrants, refugees, into France. There have been riots. There have been massive amounts of homeless people everywhere, lying on their card box houses and etc. The place doesn't look like it used to be, and people who used to travel there every year on vacation... They stopped because it's not France, it's not Paris anymore. And people are scared, people getting raped, people getting murdered all across Europe. This problem is across the entire Western world. But why does these Muslims want to come to in our Christian lands? They are colonizing us, they are attacking us. But these people, they refuse to admit these things. These people have no clue of what these people believe. They have no rule, no understanding of Sharia law. And these people demand for Sharia law. They do not want to follow our laws. They do not want to follow our constitutions. They would rather follow Sharia law, the theological order of Islam that they have in Saudi Arabia, etc. We can't tolerate that if we want to preserve our cultural heritage that we have created. But with socialism and this ultra far right, of Islam, we're gonna lose that. Because they have said themselves that they're gonna come here and mate with us and replace us as people. They're not gonna conquer us through war, they're just gonna divide and conquer us instead by coming here and pretending to be our friends, also known as Takia. This man will only worsen it. He will only bring power to these minorities, etc. The socialistic lie the socialistic dream. He will further that. And the current president have even ordered the ministers to do everything in their power to hinder Le Pen from winning this election, to undermine her. An order from the president to his ministers. It's just insidious. And the EU parliament have supported Macron. The other conservative candidates have been supporting Macron. Why aren't the conservative candidates supporting Le Pen, who's the head front of the national front of conservatism? 
It's obvious. Because they're corrupt. So if this man will win, then obviously this tradition will carry on. And people might be scared. Why is it so good to leave the European Union? Won't that lead to only more chaos and trouble in the world, and etc.? No, it doesn't. I mean, of course, we might have only lived with it in our lifetime. That's why we perceive it as an only option. But to be honest, we can forge our own destinies by choosing to go a path. We don't have to be puppets of every single thing that gets thrown to us. This is a sovereign nation. France can decide for themselves what they want to do. And there's no problem at all, even if they leave the European Union. It's up to us if we want to cooperate with them or not. Same with the British. What's the problem? They're still the same people. But with this massive immigrant inflow, that will change. And that will ultimately destroy the Western world. The freedoms we have worked for, the rights and values for homosexual people, etc. That will die out as these groups will come into power. Whether it is the extreme communist left, or whatever they want to call themselves. Or the extreme conservative right of Islam. Why, why can't we balance, be ourselves? Why can't we help the people in their frontiers rather than bringing the entire world here? It won't work. It just won't. But don't just take it from me or just listen to one biased source or whatever or fake mainstream media. You can't trust the mainstream news anymore. It's all political. So do it like anyone should. As a democratic citizen, it is up to you to determine what is the best possible choice for you in this election. Who should you choose? Like study from what people believe from the left, on the right, these minority groups that come here, the foundations of Islam, the rules, why are women being oppressed, etc., their set of beliefs, is it compatible with us? Listen to different news analysts and organizations rather than just one and the same, because yes, perhaps both are dishonest and biased, because bias lives in us all. So of course, most likely any news and political ideas you're gonna listen to are biased. But the difference is that some people are more honest than others. And of course, if you cross-reference, check with multiple different sources, eventually you will come up with your own conclusion and that will be the probably most satisfactory decision you'll be able to make. But unless, of course, you come up to the conclusion that both candidates are ineligible, but then you perhaps will abstain from the vote or find the lesser evil of the votes. But I highly suggest you thinking about this election as a whole. My, of course, suggestion is Le Pen, because she's anti-globalist. She dares to stand against her people like Merkel, and she can denounce and see through the lies of this uh, immigration crisis. I mean, there have been lots of reports of these people coming in, and I know from personal experience that we, these people does not necessarily come in to Europe because they're refugees, that they're fleeing war. There are lots of opportunities and even terrorists coming in under the disguise of Takia, pretending to be one's friend and then stabbing you in the back. And this have been admitted from multiple sources. And look in this investigation they did in Italy. Over 300,000 people came there. And it turned out that only 3% of those 340,000 or whatever it was, was actually fleeing from war, actual refugees. The rest was just opportunists. So I highly suggest you researching and really make your vote count. I'm gonna leave you to some people that gonna be able to talk about this crisis more eloquently than I. But in the meantime, this is where I get off. A new academic paper released earlier this spring has some discouraging news about Europe's experiment with mass immigration. The paper looks at 25 years of labor market data in Norway 
and it finds that while they initially get jobs and assimilate into the nation's economy, immigrants from poor countries ultimately become less integrated over time. We've seen this in other countries as well. The longer migrants spend in Norway, the less likely they are to hold jobs and the more likely they are to be dependent upon government welfare. Katie Hopkins is a global columnist for DailyMail.com and she joins us tonight. Katie, does this surprise you? It doesn't surprise me at all. It's something we've seen here in Britain for a long time. I've always maintained multiculturalism doesn't work, that in fact what we end up with is a nation of ghettos. I think that's true here in the UK. And I think what we see is that migrants arrive, and typically because we now have so many economic migrants who haven't actually suffered war or endured real hardship, that they really want to create a country within a country. They don't see Islam as compatible with Western culture, Western values. So actually they would rather live alone, separate from our society. Certainly around 23% of British Muslims have said that they would prefer and look to live under Sharia law rather than any laws that we have here. So I certainly feel that when people talk about integration, for me, I always hear the word colonization because I think that's what's happening across Europe as we have opened our arms and our borders and told everyone to come and effectively take over. So if you're going to do that, if you're going to bring people into your country in large numbers, don't you have some obligation to help them become part of your culture? Because countries in which nobody has anything in common fall apart. What are the European authorities doing to inculcate their values in these new arrivals? Absolutely. You would think that, wouldn't you? You'd think we would kind of maybe have some lessons on British values, help individuals integrate by kind of showing them our ways and enabling them to join them. I see the complete opposite happening, actually. I see that we have to bow down uh, to the cultures that come to join us. I believe we spend far too much time tiptoeing around the cultures of the people that choose to join us far too little time standing up for the cultures that have chosen, you know, they've chosen to join. I think we need to stand up for our culture and ask people to integrate into it, but I certainly don't see that happening. I think people, you know, are punished for looking Islamophobic if they try and stand up for British values, and that's why things like having the flag, our national flag, um, having the English flag, the George Cross, you know, that's seen now as kind of being almost verging on racist, potentially, certainly Islamophobic, because we're not then embracing these new cultures that come to so, join us. So it's more offensive to the British ruling class and British authorities to be anti-Islam than it is to be anti-Britain. Absolutely. You know, I know the tick list of correct answers that the liberal fascists want me to answer. I know what they'll approve of. I know what they like. And that's endless gushing sympathy for migrants, economic migrants, for the Islamic faith. You saw with the Westminster terror attack here, you know, the very first media that we had off of that was that we had to look out for our Muslim counterparts because they may be kind of under some kind of uh, attacks following the terror attack on us. It's always that idea that we need to bow down to the culture that joins right. us and we never seem to stand up for the culture they've chosen to join and it's one of my big questions always is if Islam is so fantastic why do Muslims always seem to want to come to Christian countries and it's a it's a question that I never have got an answer to yet Tucker. It's a great question and an awful lot's at stake like a thousand years of history. You take it seriously and I appreciate that Katie thanks for joining us. Thank you very much.